We're excited to be able to be back, to be able to gather and to worship together as a congregation. I want to encourage you, if you're online, it's your first time uh, checking us out, I want to encourage you to go to our website at www.gbcbak.org and you can learn some information about our church. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we get started this morning. Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to come back. We're excited that not only today we can come back uh, from the lockdown and come together, but Lord, also it's our birthday today. And so we just have a lot to celebrate. We're looking forward to coming together as your people and, and lifting up your name on high, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. We could stand and sing, or you could sit and sing, or whatever you'd like to do. So we're hoping you guys know the words. So we don't, so we got words in front of us. So give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise with the mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His love endures forever for the life that's been reborn. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever forever from the rising to the setting sun love endures forever by the grace of God we will carry on his love endures forever oh sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever forever amen let's give god a hand how oh, does that sound good i haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out on, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. 
every blessing you pour out on turn back to praise when the darkness closes in lord still i will say blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your glorious name give and take away give and take away heart will choose to say blessed be your name give and take away give and take away my heart will choose to say blessed be your name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. My foes are many, they rise against me, but I will hold my ground. I will not fear the war, I will not fear the storm, my help is on the way, my help is on the way, oh my God will not delay my refuge and strength always i will not fear his promise is true my god will come through always always Trouble surrounds me, chaos abounding. My soul will rest in. I will not fear the war, I will not fear the storm. My help is on the way. My help is on the way. Oh, my God will not delay my refuge and strength always oh i will not fear his promise is true my god will come through always my eyes up my help comes from the Lord I lift my eyes up my help comes from the Lord I lift my eyes up my help comes from the Lord. I lift my eyes up. My help comes from the Lord. Oh, my God, He will not delay my refuge and strength always oh i will not fear his promise is true my god will 
we love you. We're so grateful to be together, to be singing praises together to you. We thank you for this beautiful weather, and we just pray for Pastor Andy as he brings your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Good to be back. Amen. Well, at least two of you are glad, so, um, or the rest of you are probably cold, I guess. So, um, if you have your Bibles um, with you, I'd like for you to turn to the book of Joshua. And today we're going to look at a challenging celebration. And we're going to be looking at chapter 24, but for the sake of time, I'd like for us to look in verses 13 through 15, but encourage you to keep your Bibles open this morning to chapter 24 as we look at this text. I have given you a land for which you did not labor. And cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not plant. Now therefore fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the god of the Amorites in whose lands you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just want to come before you this morning and we want to give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for Lord just being able to come together. We thank you for being able to celebrate 14 years as Grace Baptist Church. And we just ask that as we come today that we can celebrate, but Lord, that you'll also challenge us, Lord, to rise up and continue to follow in what you have called us to do, to love others, to to love you, and to reach the world. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, graduation is usually a special time for people, and in the class of 2020, it definitely has been unusual. Many of you know I have a 2020 graduate, and we celebrated yesterday with a drive-by graduation party. And, of course, we didn't have the normal graduation ceremony. And if you go to a graduation ceremony, you know, you get there, and... Before they announce all the names and you celebrate, there's somebody there that will come and talk to the graduates. And when they're talking, they're not just coming and celebrating what has been accomplished, but they're they're calling them to focus on what is to come up next in their life, to come and to give them a challenge to continue. And, you know, Joshua does that here. This is a great time of celebration for Israel. They have been through a lot. And and they have come to the place where they have finally had victory. They're going to be able to take over the land. But, But Joshua comes and he also wants to challenge them. And as we come here on our 14th birthday, as we come off the quarantine, we have a lot to celebrate this morning. Amen? But I also want us to be challenged, to be able to say, What are we going to do moving forward? And so I want us to, first of all, see that the first thing that we need to do is remember. If you look in chapter 24 of Joshua, you will see that what Joshua begins with is being able to go through a quick summary of the nation of Israel being called with Abraham, forming a nation, being delivered from slavery being able to go through the wilderness and then go in through Jericho and to be able to have these victories and to come to the place where they are here. And what he wants them to do is he wants them to remember the faithfulness of God and everything that God had done to be able to bring them to that place. 
And today we need to take some time and we need to think and remember upon all that God has done. And especially as we celebrate our 14th birthday, we need to think about what God has done for this church. You know, what's interesting is he tells them in verse 13, he says, Listen, I've given you a land which you did not labor and cities which you did not build. And you're going to eat of the, the fruit of the land and you didn't even plant it. And, you know, we're here today and we think, you know, we have a beautiful campus, amen? And aren't we glad to be able to have this courtyard? But there's very few of us here that actually built this. And we're blessed. And so we need to be thankful to God for this beautiful campus and, and, and for the resources to be able to, to maintain it. We're, we, we need to praise God that we are a church that once we get the solar panels paid off at the end of this year, we're going to be debt free. And again, a lot of us is not the ones who did that. There were people who went before us and did that. And we need to remember their work and to be able to say thank you. We need to remember not only the buildings, but more importantly, we need to remember the ministry. Before the lockdown was happening, we remember gathering in Sunday school and small groups. We remember the fellowship groups, whether it was young adult or middle-aged couples or prime time. We remember our children coming together on Wednesday nights and having Awana and, and seeing them learn the books and the, and the youth group uh, being able to meet in the ministry that I was doing on the campus life, uh, especially in the junior highs uh, that, that we're meeting we we think about over the past 14 years, the mission trips that our church has done. We, we've been to Brazil and Argentina and Uruguay, San Diego, Belize, Japan, the Philippines. We, we've done outreaches, whether they've been in the fall with the Harvest Festival or Judgment House or in the spring with the Easter egg hunt. We've done VBS in the summer. We, we've done what we called the Rosedale Bash, and we did the Love Your Neighborhood. We've done things with the rescue mission. We've done back-to-school rallies. We had special services for Thanksgiving. And what about our Christmas outreach when our children do the musical? And then think about just the times that we've had together where we've just come together for fellowship as a church, and we think, God, you have been good, and we need to remember we also need to remember those who went before us. There's those who have already gone to their great reward, and they are the foundation upon which we are here today. People like Dick and Joanne Varvel, Russell Palmer, Karen Rogers, Jim and Winnie Ware, Oris Lodine, Mary Eddie Bissell, Barbara Smith, Bob Arp, Lee Bush, Erlene Brewster, and we could list dozens and dozens more of faithful saints who, who gave their lives and served this church. We think about those who have had to move away because of the economy. People like the Coppersmiths and Randy Patterson, Ben and Anna Saucier, among many others over the years, who were so faithful. And God moved them to somewhere else. People who we have trained in ministry, the Olmsteads, the Reagans, who were so faithful and were here today because of the ministry they did and we need to remember. There's also those that aren't here because they got wounded in the spiritual battle or they gave up and abandoned the faith. Not all the stories are positive. Not all of them have been successful. But today we remember that God has brought us through all of it. And most of all, we want to remember the salvations we remember the kids that, that came to know the Lord in our VBS and our WANA ministry, the, the youth that went to camp, the youth that, that went on outreaches and mission trips and came to know Christ. When we think about the, the baptismal waters being stirred over 200 times and, and thinking about the people who have come to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior and made that declaration. And today we not only remember what God has done for our church, we think about what he's done for us individually. Think about the blessings that you have in your family, your friends, your job. And even in the difficult times when you've gone through grief and you've gone through hardship, 
Hasn't it been comforting that God has been there? We all need to think about what we're coming out through, through this COVID-19. And, and as we get back to, to normal, man, isn't it good to reflect upon the things that we sort of missed? We missed fellowship, didn't we? We, we missed just being able to get together. We missed being able to get a haircut. I am so glad I was able to get one for you guys. But, you know, we take a lot for granted. And I hope that as we come through this, we can think and reprioritize what's most important. We need to remember, most of all, what has Jesus done for me? Today, we need to think about the day that we were saved, the day that he delivered us. We need to think about how he's walked with us through our wilderness, how he has been our provider, how he has done miracles for us, how he has given us his word, how he has given us his spirit. And today we need to just take time and remember and just say, thank you, God. We love you. Second thing I want you to see is that Joshua challenges them to serve. He tells them, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And God had blessed Israel, and he had given them a great victory. And God has blessed our church, and and the response to to receiving his blessing is to say, yes, we are willing to serve. And, And the challenge was Israel was willing to say, yes, we will serve. But then when you looked at their action, they went and they followed the other gods. And, and this is the challenge, that, that we have to make sure that we don't go after the false gods of money and success and comfort, that we don't turn our things, our, our, our lives, to go serve for things that truly don't matter. And so he comes here and he says, listen, I want you to understand that you need to, first of all, serve in the fear of the Lord. We need to serve with reverence. We need to come to the place where we recognize that God deserves our honor. We've been studying a little bit about that in our study in Job. And, and, and we've been coming together in our Sunday school classes. And we've talked about this subject of fearing the Lord. And how important it is to, to, to come back. And, and if there's something that we look in our society today that it has a lack of, it's that it has a lack of the fear of the Lord and honoring his name. And that needs to begin back with the church of God, that we honor him. Not only do we do it in fear of the Lord, but he also says that we need to do it with sincerity of heart. That, that word for sincerity means to do without blemish, to serve holy. It means to be complete. It means to give everything that you have. That, that when we serve, it's not out of obligation, but it's out of a willingness that says, God, I love you, and I am sincere in what I am doing. And then he says, not only to serve in sincerity, but to serve in truth. That word means firmness, faithfulness, stability. It's a reminder us that God never changes, and so our service should be consistent. It should be fervent. God says, I don't want lukewarm. I, I want you to be either hot or cold. And, and, and so we have to say, God, I, I'm ready to be fervent again. I'm ready to commit to serve you. And I think as we come back, we've all been given a great blessing with this COVID-19 because it almost stopped all of us in our track. And we got to hit the reset button. And as you begin to rebuild your life again, you get to determine as you rebuild, what are you going to go and chase after? What is going to be the priority of your life? And I think for all of us, there's things that need to change, amen? And as we look at our world, we need to see it needs to change. And we need to come back and say, God, I'm not going to go and just do what I did last time. But God, I'm going to reset. I'm going to make sure that you are first and the highest priority. You, I will serve. Now, you know, as a a pastor, you want to be able to preach and you want to hear the people say, amen, pastor, we'll do it. And that's exactly what the people do for Joshua. But then immediately 
after Joshua hears them say, all right, I hear you. It's interesting, Joshua says, wait, wait, wait a minute. You can't serve the Lord. And you know, the reality is, is that in and of our flesh, we'll fail and we'll give up and we'll quit. The only way that we can do it in Christ, and he, and he, and he realized that and he knew that. And so he says, listen, are you serious? Are you really going to follow through? And you know, 1 Peter tells us that each of us have been given spiritual gifts in order which to serve. Ephesians 4 says that the, the, the ministry of the, the staff and the pastors and the elders of the church is to equip the people for the service. Matthew 28 gives us the great commission to go into the world and make disciples and to teach them all things. And, and so we see that we have the same calling as the church to be able to come and to rally and, and to say, listen, we're not about just coming and singing songs. It's great to be able to fellowship, but, but our, our, our focus, our goal is to take what we know and to bring that truth in word and deed to the world, amen? And we need to be able to minister to each other. And Joshua warns them, listen, there's no such thing as cheap grace. And he warns them and he says, listen, God Here's what you're saying. And, and listen, he's been good to you. And he says in verse 22, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. And he says, now therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord of God of Israel. And the people said, the Lord our God, we will serve. We will obey. And the decision that we have to step back and say is, what decision do we make, Grace Baptist Church? Do we make the decision to say, God, as we come back, we are willing to serve and we're willing to obey your voice, recognizing that our God is going to hold us accountable to the words and the vow that we make. And we need to remember that when we stand before a holy God, that he hears us and there's an importance of accountability. And that leads us to the third thing is we see the renewing of the covenant. We see here in the end of chapter 24 that Joshua comes and he brings a large stone and he puts it under an oak tree. If you look in verse 26 and he says something very interesting. He says, listen, you're witnesses to yourself today, but I want you to know that that rock underneath that oak tree is listening, and it will be our witness. Now, that seems a little weird, doesn't it, that he would say a rock will be a witness, because a rock, we say, can't speak. But do you remember the story when Jesus went into uh, the, the, the final Passover into Jerusalem, he's heading in, and it's... The, the people are yelling, Hosanna, they're, they're, they're worshiping him. And the Pharisees come and say, listen, stop worshiping him. And Jesus says this, he says, listen, if the people stop, what would happen? The rocks would cry out. And folks, today in just a little bit, I'm going to ask you to make a commitment. One, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you renew your commitment to him as we get ready to take communion, as we always do on our birthday. And then secondly, I'm going to ask you to renew your commitment to the church. And I'm going to ask you to cry out and say, yes, we will. And I want you to realize that as we get to stand outside in this courtyard today under these trees, we have these rocks. And as you look through, and every time you come in this courtyard, I want you to remember that these rocks will be witnesses. These rocks will hear if we say, yes, I am willing to serve you, Lord. I am willing to serve the church. You know, we all have something in common at Grace Baptist. When we came together, we came and we made a commitment to one another. Everybody that's a member of our church signed and made the same commitment. 
that commitment was to say five things. Number one, I promise that as a member of Grace Baptist Church, I will study God's word with the people of Grace Baptist. And I will also be in a fellowship group where I will meet with them and and pray with them. Two, I, I agreed to take the spiritual giftedness that God has given me and I will use it to serve the people in the church. Number three, I agree to faithfully, financially support the church. Four, I agree to have a regular time with the Lord each and every day to pray and to be in, and in the Word so that I will grow spiritually. And five, I agree to share my faith with lost people. And I agree to invite others to come to know Him and invite them to the worship services here at Grace. And today, I want us to recall our commitment and say, God, we're ready to renew our commitment to you individually, Jesus. And today, we're ready to renew our commitment as a church that we'll do what we've called us to do. And as we reset our lives, we need to boldly declare, God, we're willing to follow you today. What God desired for Israel is that they would be totally sold out and that they would minister in his name so that the world could be reached. And folks, our world is in a dark and terrible place. And, and, and what it needs is light. And I'm praying that Grace Baptist Church will rise up. And we can't control what other churches do. We can't control what the rest of the world does, amen? But what we can do is say, we don't know what the rest of you are going to do, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you that we can't do this in your strength, Lord. It's only accomplished when we understand, Jesus, that you died on the cross and you rose again. And only in your power will we be able to do this. And Lord, for those who have been able to experience that power, Lord, they, they know that, that you have not forsaken them, that you are with them. And Lord, even though we stumble, Lord, we thank you for these times where we can come back and have a reset button and to be able to say, God, today I'm ready to recommit my life to serve you, and God, I'm ready to recommit my life and say, yes, I will do what I have been called, I've already agreed to do as a member of Grace Baptist Church. And Lord, I pray for those out here today who maybe realize that they don't have a personal relationship with you, that they've really never come to the place to believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead. Lord, that today they'll make that most important decision. Say, Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner. Lord, that you died and you paid my penalty and you rose three days again. And today, I put my trust in you. And Jesus, I ask for you to save me. And Lord, today would be the day of their salvation. Lord, we just thank you that that's happened many times over the 14 years at Grace Baptist Church. There's been people who have come to know you and Lord, made that decision to follow through with baptism as well. To publicly say, I'm a follower of Christ. And Lord, as those who have come together and unified together today as Grace Baptist Church, we commit ourselves to follow you in your way. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we're going to do things a little bit differently as we sing. Or our elders are going to come through and they're going to be bringing you the communion elements. And as they come to your square, just lift up how many you need. Um, we know, realize that some of you have children and you don't need it, and they'll make sure that you get what you need. But I want to encourage you. The Bible says that communion is for those who understand what it's about. And we remember that, that Jesus called us to remember. It's a time of remembrance. If there's never been a time in your life that you have truly made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord, then don't take of the bread and the cup. Because God says in, in doing so, you, you, you recognize that you're saying something that's not true. 
It's just like Israel did. They said they were going to serve, but they didn't. What's important is not what you can say with your mouth. Is What's important is what you'll say with your mouth that you will follow through with your life. And if you're here today and you say, yes, I am a follower of Jesus. And, and I've received his grace and I'm ready to renew that commitment. Today, take it and boldly say, today, I'm ready to serve him. So at this time, Adam will lead us in a song. And just let them know as they come through how many you need. To Jesus I surrender all, to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All. To Jesus I surrender humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender I surrender all, and all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, and all to Jesus I surrender now. I feel the sacred flame. Oh, the joy of full salvation. Glory, glory to His name. I surrender all. I surrender My blessed Savior, I surrender all. That is your prayer this morning, that it's not just words that we sing, but just as Joshua called them to forsake everything, And to follow God, Jesus has called us to do the same thing. So this morning, I'm going to ask us to do something that's a little bit different for Baptists, but I'm going to ask us to shout, all right, just as the people were at that time. And if you can truly make a commitment today that says, God, I understand, Jesus, that you died for my sins and you rose again and I have given my life to you. And I'm ready to renew that commitment today. I want you to yell out, I will serve the Lord and obey his voice. I will serve the Lord and obey his voice. So if you can make that commitment today, let's do that on the count of three. One, two, three. I will serve the Lord and obey his voice. For those of you who have made that commitment today, I... I'd like for you to take out your little prepared communion and take out the bread. And as you take out the bread, remember today 
that is, Joshua would remember, they went through the wilderness and there was the manna from heaven that was just given to them for their provision. And today we remember spiritually that there has been a provision that has been made and given to us to be able to give us the strength to be able to keep this promise. We can't keep it in our flesh. But today, you have the Holy Spirit that has been given to you, your provision that came because Jesus Christ died and rose again. And so today, as you take this bread, remember the provision that God has given you spiritually for eternal life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the bread, and we remember you giving your body so that we, Lord, could have life. We thank you for being our provision. And Lord, we remember today what you have provided for us. And Lord, we commit to take what you have given and use it for your service. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Likewise, it says he took the cup. And as you take your cup, we remember this cup represented the blood of Christ, which he said would be a new covenant. And what's interesting is he said that you're going to keep on doing this. And Jesus knew that we would need to continue to have communion because we are forgetful people, amen? And so we need these times to remind us, you know what? Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you for not just a second chance, but 150 chance. And Lord, today as I take this cup, I remember that all my sins have been forgiven. I'm not going to leave here today in guilt. I'm not going to leave here in shame. The past is in the past. There's nothing I can do about that. But God, I thank you for the reset button, and I'm looking forward to living differently now. And so as we take the cup, we remember that he's given us a new beginning. And so we walk in that new beginning. And today, may we walk in a new beginning as a church in a freshness that says, God, we will give you everything that we can for your glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the cup. We thank you for this blood that was shed that doesn't save part of our sin, but all of it. And Lord, we come and take it today and ask for a boldness to go and to share that hope with a lost and dark world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second thing I'd like for us to do today is to renew our commitment to our church. And so I'd like for us to do the same thing. I'd like for us to shout. And if you're willing to renew your commitment to the church, understanding the five things you've already committed to and to say, yes, I'm ready to follow and renew my commitment to the church. I want you to simply yell, we will serve our Lord and our church. We will serve our Lord and our church. And then we're going to do something fun. In everybody's bag, you should open it up and you should see a little popper. And after, those, after we make that commitment, I want us to pull the popper out and we're going to celebrate uh, what, what was done. All right, is everybody sort of ready? Yes, no, maybe so. Dina, Dina's got to get her popper, so we're going we're gonna to let her. She, she wants to be a part of it, okay? So, if you need a bag, this is your last chance. Kenny's running. My wife's running. Rod's running. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We've got another service in just a few moments. (laughs) All right. So, let's stand. Recognize that we are witnesses to one another today. These rocks will be witnesses. 
And if you are willing to renew your commitment to Grace Baptist Church, today will you say, we will serve our Lord and our church. One, two, three. We will serve our Lord and our church. All right, pull your poppers. Happy birthday, Grace Baptist. Before I close this in a word of prayer, just want to remind you, um, at 11 o'clock today, we have Sunday school. Had not heard a lot of people commit to study God's word together this morning. So we'll look forward. Go to our website at www.gbcbak. Click the Sunday school tab. Click the link, and you can be able to know uh, which class to join. It'll be a great time um, of fellowship, and it's just 45 minutes of study. Really great time. We have classes for kids, youth, and adults. And then also, remember to give your offering. Uh, we won't be collecting that um, by hand, so there's some boxes as you leave, and just encourage you to put your offering in those boxes this morning. I'm going to close this in a word of prayer, then ask you to still stay, and then we're going to dismiss you by rows, okay, um, so that we can still stay safe and keep within the guidelines. So let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for a great celebration. I thank you for the renewing of covenants, the commitment to serve, and Lord, we thank you for this beautiful time to remember how you have been faithful to bring us, Lord, through this hard time. Lord, it's not over, but we know that you'll continue to be faithful, and we're thankful that we can come back to gather and to sing and to worship. Lord, we love you. We love your church, and we commit to allow you to use us as we listen and obey your voice individually and as a body of believers for your glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to allow this row right here, if you'll head. You can head to your course. Trying to find the faith that's good.